All right. A lot of y'all are probably going to be able to guess these three baits, but we're going to do a transition period, fall transition top three baits. And this video is sponsored by Shop Carl's, which a lot of y'all know. If I say a video is sponsored by something, you're going to be able to guess which one it is. But anyways, if y'all have followed the channel, go make a guess right now. See if you can guess which three baits I'm going to say, because I've done this video almost every year. And these baits are, are consistent. Since I was 14 or 15 years old, these have been the three baits for this time of year. So go leave a comment and tell me which three baits I'm going to say in this video. So and don't cheat. Don't cheat. You can probably hear one. What's going on? We are kind of getting through all the content for the season. You know, I've been told congratulations for winning AOI by a lot of y'all a ton of times. Every single video, y'all are commenting commenting it and it does not get old at all that is absolutely amazing it's phenomenal i appreciate all y'all's support and y'all cheering me on and telling me congrats and so many of y'all have pretty much said it from the beginning that something like this was going to happen and you know it's pretty awesome you know that it could happen and a lot of y'all commenters can say i told you so you know so that's part of the fun of it but anyways kind of going to get into the conditions that are real time right now you know we're wearing a hoodie right now and it's early october getting close to mid october right now actually but uh it hasn't been long just like a couple days a couple days getting starting to get cold but the thing about that is the temperature is in my opinion not as important as the length of the day and from june throughout the end of summer and going into October the days start getting shorter and shorter and shorter there's less light penetration in the water that's why a lot of times in the winter a lot of reaction baits do extremely well baits that fish can really feel and make a lot of disturbance seem to outperform finesse a lot of times for those big bites whenever the days get shorter and shorter and it's just because the angle of the earth the sun is not hitting us quite as squarely and there's not as much light penetration going on in the water so a lot of times reaction baits start to really play and this whenever i get away from a lot of the you know finesse stuff the weightless worms the wacky rigs all that type of stuff is great postpone summer stuff like that but this time of year i'm going to start transitioning into the little bit more power fishing type of bait so i'm gonna give y'all three baits right now that i feel like i can cover water with in any single lake in the country probably up until i'm gonna say mid to late december these baits are probably three of the most productive ones that i have every tournament that i've been fishing around here i've had these three tied on laying on the front deck maybe i didn't weigh many on it but i know this bite is coming and it's going to happen with these three exact baits so we're going to jump right into it number one fall fishing everybody knows buzz bait is just like one of those things it's just one of them things pre-spawn a big buzz bait place and then in the fall a regular size buzz bait really really plays big time this right here is actually a lost river lures custom one that you know he made for me it sounds really really good got a really really good sound to it but it's got a head on it that i actually trimmed down with some snips and stuff like that but these are this is the buzz bait that i throw a ton i like that little i like that little bend in the wire because what that does is it just kind of drops that hook down a little bit from the blade some buzz baits the blade will be right here and the hook will be like right here and if, if a big fish comes up and bites it and gets the whole thing, like a four or five pounder, can, can actually get all the way up to the blade. And sometimes you can still hook them, but you just don't hook them quite as good. So the further away you can get that hook from the blade without making it too big and bulky is really, really good in my opinion. So that little bend helps that a lot. It also makes them miss it a lot less because it pushes that plastic down in the water just a little bit. So it's not you know too much disturbance when they come up and get it. A lot of times when it's like this, some really, really big fish will come up and just barely make a swirl and then you'll hook them and they'll be really, really good ones because that bait just a little bit down more in the water. It's more like a, they eat it like a swim jig bite where they don't really blow up on it, but your hookups go way up. And that, that's how I feel. I feel like when I throw a buzz bait that has that little bend right there in it, it really goes way up as far as hookups. So that's one that's really, really good. And this is not a early morning deal. Now to preface that, first thing in the morning in all these tournaments this is probably what i'm going to start with and i'm going to throw it for a first two or three hours but as long as you've got good shade lines you've got 
isolated cover that the fish can come up off of. It's a really, really good bait to throw all day. And sometimes I definitely will. It'll be like the only bait that I throw will be this and then maybe pick up a jig for a couple of casts this time of year. So really like to just cover a lot of water with this. And it generates that little bit better average bite. A lot of people say a buzz bait gets those really, really big bites. I've never really felt like when I pick up a buzz bait, I'm fishing for six pounders. But I do feel like when I pick up a buzz bait, I'm fishing for those two to three pounders way more often than almost any other bait. It just seems to catch a little bit better average. And then obviously I have caught a lot of really, really big ones on a buzz bait. But for the most part, I feel like some other top waters get a little bit bigger bite but this one gets a better average size. And it also, there's sometimes when they get keyed in on this thing coming down the sides of those sea walls and stuff, that it is a big, big, big time player and they'll just chase it down and smoke it. Another really cool thing about these lakes I've got around here is we got really good spotted bass in here. Like you can catch some pound three quarter, two, two and a half pound spots. A three pounder is a really, really big one, but you can catch a lot of pound three quarter to two and a half, you know, this time of year. And that buzz bait's one of those baits that those better quality spots seem to want to key on. So we're going to keep up the whole speed part of this right now. And this is a bait. This one's obviously, everybody probably knows what this is now. This is designed by Octafo, which is the wood bait. I'm going to say wizard. He's a wood bait wizard. So this is a Rapala OG Tiny 4. Dives four foot deep, but it's got a slender profile, flat side, small profile, catches a lot of fish. You know, all crankbaits catch them really, really good in the fall, but when you have one that's more of a, I would say polarizing action, really wide body, super buoyant, lots of thump, that's the ones where you need conditions to catch them. You need to be overcast, a little bit rainy, you know, windy, all those types of conditions, that makes them want to hunt down those baits that have a lot of thump and a lot of vibration and a lot of buoyancy. And the reason I'm saying buoyancy is because the buoyancy is what gives those baits so much vibration. When that bait is has a big round body and it wants to float really hard, it wants to float and the beel is pulling it down, so that makes it really get that roll. So a lot of buoyancy is what gives that bait a lot of thump. These flat sides are not quite as buoyant and that beel is a little bit, obviously, it's a circuit board, small little round bill. It just kind of gives it a little shimmy coming through the water. This is not a polarizing bait. This is a bait that generates bites if it's slick, windy, you know, rainy, bluebird skies, all that type of stuff. It generates those reaction bites and it generates, you know, those feeding bites at the same time when they're hunting it. It, it, it does a lot of different things. Just a very consistent bait. I threw a lot of balsa baits for a long time over the years and to get one like this that is a whole lot cheaper than a lot of the boss ones I've been throwing. It also has really, really good paint jobs and holds up really real, really well also. It's really important because a lot of the balsa baits I've been throwing for years are $25. And you can get this one for probably half that or a little bit less than half that. So, I mean, that's that's a, a really good thing to, you know, factor in whenever you're buying a lot of baits because you need a lot of different colors this time of year. Anyways, really good bait for throwing around shallow docks, shallow floating docks, shallow rock, deeper bluff rocks, cranking it around some isolated wood, a little bit isolated wood. These flat sides with a small build, they don't like throwing up in, in the gnarliest laydowns. Those really buoyant ones with more of a leg sand build, they like the, the gnarly laydowns. This right here is for light, light cover and then rock. The circuit board builds do very, very good around rock but they don't do that well around wood. But this is the time of year where they transition from wood to rock typically they start that rock bite starts to play they start to transition from wood to rock and they start to transition from bluegill to shad and crawfish that's how it seems to me this is the time of year where the both of those transitions happen and i kind of factor that in so the third bait this is the one to pick it apart and generate the the big old bites everybody knows what this is going to be that's going to be the untamed tackle ace jig this is a 3 8 ounce right here this is dirty crawl this is one so I get baits, to me, I get uh, the heads of the jig and then I've, I get the skirt separate and I kind of mix and match a little bit. This is a green pumpkin head with a dirty crawl skirt. I almost always, 99% of the time, I throw a dirty crawl with a brown head and I, I like it the best. But, you know, when it, I just kind of put this one on a green pumpkin head, it looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more natural to me. Small little trailer on back, you know. Nothing overpowering, just something small to skip around. Because like I said, we have big spots in here and I want to be able to catch those good spots and those big large mouths. So I want to, I want a bait that has that doesn't have such a big profile, the spots can't bite it, but I don't want it to have too small of a profile where the big large mouth aren't going to react to it. So 
that's kind of the size that I have kind of settled on for this time of year. And I have been seeing a lot of bluegill up shallow around the shallow floating docks, just up on the bank everywhere I go, there's a lot of bluegill up shallow. So I put me, I rigged me up a donk one. Gonna tie this one on today also, just a donk jig and skip it up around those docks. Looks looks very, very similar to a bluegill. Like that's a very good bluegill imitator to me. I got a little bit of chartreuse in it, a little bit of uh, watermelon, a lot of stuff like that. A little bit of contrast right there. That, that little bit of, I don't even know what color that is, but I really, really like that that's contrast. That's the same color as my nails. Yep, show is. Hunter's nail color, that's what that's called. So that's what we got. And I, those are the two jigs I kind of go back and forth. Early in the fall, a lot of times I'm throwing the donk because I see a lot of bluegill. Late in the fall, I almost always throw dirty crawl. Like 99% of the time I'm throwing dirty crawl because they're trying to eat those crawfish that time of year. So I throw the OG Slim 4 on a seven foot fate cranking rod with a 6.8 to one and 10 pound sunline sniper that's what i throw this on i throw the 10 pound sniper because it casts a little bit better than shooter I, I i can throw it a lot further and these light balsa baits it's really important to get i mean if you can just get an extra five or ten feet out of a cast that's a big difference when you're throwing these balsa baits because you can't throw them very far like it's very difficult to throw them 100 feet so having that seven foot medium and then light line 10 pound and then sniper because it casts better is a really big deal this right here we've got a new Sorry. Almost dropped the camera. This right here, I throw on a seven foot three medium heavy Envy rod, medium heavy, extra fast, fifty pound Sunline AMZ braid. That's what I've been throwing this on for this entire fall and all summer, also. But eight point uh, no seven point five to gear ratio reels. What I throw this on? I throw on seven point five, a little bit slower. Just I don't know why it's on a buzz bait. I don't want to have the eight point three to one. I mean. You can do it, you can get away with it, because you can see the bait and you reel the bait to the speed of how the bait looks. But I know me, when I'm not catching them and I start struggling, my tendency is to go a little bit too fast. So slightly slower reel, 7.5 to one, not much slower at all. And then the old jig, definitely gonna throw it on an 8.3 to one gear ratio. And I've actually been throwing that on a seven foot one medium heavy extra fast Muse from 13 Fishing. Been throwing it on that for a few weeks now ever since i've been home that's kind of what i put it on because i really like the way that rod feels so a seven foot one medium heavy extra fast muse that's two inches shorter than what i usually use and i think i'm going to go to i think i'm going to settle on the seven foot three medium heavy extra fast muse i really like those rods a little bit more power super light super crisp and that's kind of the rod that i'm going to start throwing a jig on probably for the foreseeable future is that seven foot three muse so 20 pound sunline shooter if I'm gonna be flipping around super gnarly docks with a lot of brush, I'll put it on 22. But 20 is kind of the, the happy medium. That's where I wanna be, is in that 20 pound shooter range. If it gets super heavy cover though, bump it up to 22. So that's my three fall baits that if you see me at a local pot tournament and you come trying to peek and see exactly what I got on, these three are gonna be laying there. That's a guarantee. So. And some secret ones. Oh, and some secret ones, but don't be looking at them now. So, Kyle don't know I'm about to say this, but I'm about to say something. Are you ready? Okay, so, there's some changes in this video that might be hard to recognize. There are a couple of major changes. And, if you can leave a comment below saying what those changes are, I might go through the house, I might go through the garage, and I might send you a package of Kyle Welcher stuff. Because he will never miss it. But will you? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe some coffee, maybe some merch, maybe some... Gamakatsu, <laughs> hooks, some sunlight. Hey, easy, easy now. You trying to give away my juice? Yeah. Man, the Gamakatsu hooks and the sunlight. Yeah. I ain't got me these buzz baits, so I can't be giving them away. I only got about five of these. I'm going to have to place an order. Also, if you want to buy the Camus that Kyle won a lot of, email us. Yep. It is for sale right now. So, going to have four Lawrence's, Active Target 2. That's all coming with it? Yeah. Motor guide, trolling motor, two 36 volt lithium pros, hook parallel, power pole charge, eight foot power pole blades. Um, yeah. And yeah. all and all the good juju, that's the biggest part. The good juju is a, yeah. big, is a big big factor of it. But so we're gonna transfer a little bit of it to the new boat. We gotta transfer some good juju to the new boat, no doubt. And Jordan's not included. Lucky J's are not included, so. I feel like I had one more thing, I forgot though. What was it? Yep, that's a good call, Hunter. The boat is for sale now. 
And oh, oh, oh. And also, merch is coming out in the future. Yep. So leave a comment below if you would like some or if when it comes out you're going to order some. Yeah, we do have we do have merch coming. Going to be some pretty cool shirts. But we may do like a So we're ma making a website right now. I don't really want to be kind of promoting it and telling y'all, "Hey, go buy this t-shirt." All that type of stuff. So I may just drop some Easter eggs in the videos and you might just see me wearing the shirt or see Hunter wearing the shirt or see somebody wearing the shirt and then that'll kind of be the the trigger that if you want that shirt it's going to be on the website so i probably am not going to push it too much but the people that want it you can just go go find it and get it before everybody else does that's why because I, I don't want to be on here like hey go buy my t-shirt because i don't feel like that's right but if you want it a lot of people said they want it so he worked on it got some really cool ones that i want you know and if y'all see them just know. And that I want to. We, bo we both kind of designed both of them. Hunter designed one. I designed one. And we got a couple more that, you know, I don't like quite as much. But two of them, I think, look really, really good. But anyways, if y'all see those, I might have to go do a little digging. Do a little hunting and find them. So, maybe look like Okay, a, I'll a link them on Instagram, y'all. I'm not going to make it that hard. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, I don't know. I feel like I, it's weird to tell people, hey, go go click the link and buy my t-shirt. Yeah, but they're, they've asked for them. Yeah. And they're so cute. That one is. Yeah. Yeah. I think mine's cuter than yours. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Everybody's gonna like mine. Everybody's gonna like mine. It'll be in a video very soon. Is that all you have? That's all I got. Tell them we're out here on a small little. We local are. Lake. We're on the banks of a small little local lake, trying to put the boat in, about to put the boat in the water. Not trying. Haven't tried yet. If I would leave them alone. But. But I gotta go catch one on an ace. It's, but it's like late in the day now. Not really. It's just not early in the morning. But when it's 40 degrees in the morning, we'll just wait till the sun gets up. Just let them slide up under them docks and go catch them. What do you think about that? Yep, that's it. See y'all. See ya.